Hello everybody, and welcome back to the SolidCam introductory series. In this video, we're going to cover drilling operations. Now specifically, we're going to cover drilling just in a milling context. If you want to see how we set up drilling operations for a turning context, we'll direct you over to our series on turning. To add a drilling operation, you can go up to the SolidCam operations tab, click on 2.5D, and click on drilling. Or you can go to SolidCam 2.5D and click on drilling from here. Or if you want, you can right click on setup, go down to add milling operations, and click on drilling from here. Now the drilling operation isn't just for drilling. You could do counter bores, counter sinks, drilling, tapping, reaming, really any operation that uses a series of drill points and then simply moves the tool up and down in the Z axis. The first thing we have to do is select our geometry. So for now we'll click new. And the geometry for a drilling operation is just a series of points. We can select those points from the center points of circles, center points of cylinders. You can also grab arcs and radii. And we'll also let you select faces and grab all of the holes that SolidCam detects on that surface. So for example, if I wanted to use this hole right here, I have a couple of options. I can click directly on the cylinder and it will grab my center point. Or if I look at a different hole, I can also click on the outer edge of the circle and same thing, it grabs my center point. We'll also let you click on faces, such as down here, and grab every circle that we see on that face. Now we also let you add filters to these selections to make your job a little bit easier. So for example, if I wanted to pre-drill all these corner radii here, I would need to select them one by one. But instead, I can use my face selection tool and apply some filters so that I grab all these radii. If I go to my filter section, I can simply click Include Arcs, and now when I click on this top face, it'll grab every one of these corner radii as well. Now you notice that it's also grabbed all these smaller radii, and in reality, I probably don't want to pre-drill these small little radii here. So instead, I want to filter all of those out by size. Let me clear my selection, and I'll show you how we do that. If I scroll down to the bottom, we see a list of all of our drill points, and I can right click and say delete all. From here, I go back up to my filter section, and instead of all circles, I want to change this to by radius. If I click by radius again, I can select my geometry, in this case, this arc right here. SolidCam will automatically pull the dimensions from the geometry, hit the green check mark. And now when I click on this face, it's only going to grab geometry that is that same diameter. Then I can simply go back to all circles, uncheck include arcs, Click that top face again, and I've grabbed my four corner holes. And just like that, I have all the geometry selected that I would need. Now you may have noticed as I was selecting all those holes that every one of these points has a number associated to it. That's simply the number that's the order in which I've selected those points, and it's also the order that by default will sort all of these holes. You can change that simply by clicking and dragging in this list down below, or you can change it more granularly in the operation tab that we'll show you in a minute. But for now, we're going to save this geometry with the green check mark, and we'll add a tool. Now we've already shown you how to use the toolkit in a different video, so for now we're just going to go in and we're just going to add any old drill will do. And we'll hit the check mark. As always, the data tab is where you can assign your speeds and feeds, and your coolant tab is where you can define things like MQL, mist coolant, or flood coolant if your machine supports it. Next up is our levels tab. Now just like you've seen before, we have a couple of ways we can define our levels. We can either use a user-defined value, where we actually type in a number, or we can use it associative to some aspect of the model. So for example, if we look at our drill depth, we can either have a user-defined value, we can define it by the top of the hole, or we can define it by the bottom of the target. For the upper levels, we can define it either by user-defined or by updated stock. Now this one's very useful because it's going to be fully stock aware and it's going to look at all of our previous operations. So it'll be able to tell if there's additional material on top of that hole that it might not otherwise know of. So if I say by updated stock, and I haven't actually machined this area in here yet, it knows that there's material all the way to this top surface. All I've done is say, face this part. So it'll make sure that it doesn't plunge the drill all the way through just to reach that hole. It'll be drilling the entire way down. For my drill depth, we can also use the top of the hole, or we can say bottom of the target. In this case, I'm gonna say user defined. And if we want, we can type in a number here, or we can also click on a surface and have it automatically link that dimension. So for example, if I say user defined, and I click right here, I can simply click on the top surface, and tell it that this is how far down I'd like that drill to go. You can see that the field is now color-coded in green, and that's because this is now associatively linked to model geometry. So instead of just a hard-coded value, say 0.925, that would always be there regardless of any model changes, the fact that, that field is green means that it's actually tied to this surface and not just that number. So if I go back and make any changes to my model geometry that would move this surface up or down, it's always going to stay linked to this surface and not just some arbitrary number. Now for things like drills and countersink bits, it becomes important to know where we want the depth to apply to on the drill itself. So we can specify either by the cutter tip, so the actual fine, fine tip of the drill itself, 
or at full diameter, so measure from where the drill actually reaches its full diameter. If you're using a countersinking bit, you can also specify what diameter up that countersinking bit you want to use. Now in this case, if we're drilling out these inside radii here, we don't necessarily want to mar this top surface, we want to machine that later, so we'll specify something like cutter tip in this case. Now because this is such a simple operation, there's not much to see on the technology tab. The first thing we have is our sorting order. So this is what order we're actually going to drill all of our various drill points. By default, we're going to sort simply by the order in which you selected all of them. You could also have it go by shortest distance, where it's just going to pick the shortest distance between each of the holes. Or we can go down to advanced and pick a more detailed pattern. We have both linear and circular patterns, so let's use one of the linear ones just to start. And if we click show sorted, it'll show you the order in which it's going to do all those holes. And if we go back and change it to something like a circular pattern, and show sorted again, you can see it's now using a different strategy. So you can pick whatever makes the most sense for your setup. And next up is drilling cycle. So whichever drilling cycle your particular controller supports and that we've added into your post processor, you'll see those listed and available here. So if we wanted to switch over to something like a G83 for PEC drilling, and if we go down to the data tab, we can actually specify all of our values for that particular drill cycle we might be using. And again, this will work for whatever type of cycle you're using, whether it's a drilling cycle, a tapping cycle, a reaming cycle, whatever you're using. And that's going to do it for our video on drilling operations for a milling part. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to the help desk information on the description of this video or to comment directly. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.